All right, Ivan, how are you today? Very good. Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? <laughs> Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal está usted? Muy bien, muy bien. How are you keeping lately? Everything well? <laughs> yeah, so far so good. Very busy, busy, busy work. Busy week. <laughs> It has been a, a bit of a hectic uh, work uh, marathons lately, but yeah. it is what it is. I can you know, imagine. Better, better. Eh? Sorry? No, no, but better to have it at don't have it, so I can I can't complain. <laughs> well, at the moment we're uh, we're in that Spanish phenomenon which is called the uh, Cuesta de Enero, right? It is, it is indeed, and hopefully <laughs> it will be ended uh, in this couple of days to, <laughs> towards the end. Now with the next pay sleep, <laughs> I'll just get you to explain what this uh, Cuesta is. Exactly. So basically, you have celebrated a lot of Christmas, buying a lot of presents, big meals, things like that. Also, it's very typical that because of the 14 <laughs> payments that usually the, the employees have in Spain, your uh, December pay slip that usually normally is, is being towards the every month, towards the end of the month, I don't know, like 28, 29, 30, yeah. every company is different, but more or less like that. In December, you get your double pay because one double pay is in June, the other one is in, in December, uh, around the 15th or whatever, because, you know, with Christmas, things get a little bit slow. So, you know, the finance people try to speed up the, the process. And of course, you have the money earlier on your pocket <laughs> for the Christmas, that's for the Christmas presents. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, so you what, spend what happened, exactly, you spend it, and what happened is that it's still a long 31 day January ahead of you. And not only that, <laughs> you, so basically you have get your pay sleep earlier in December, you have the whole of January ahead of you. And usually in this country, All the price increase because of the uh, inflation or the, or the CPI indices for, for the previous year, transport, public prices, etc., etc., goes up on the 1st of January. So <laughs> on top of the long-winded uh, time frame until the next uh, pay slip, you have the escalated prices. And, you know, this year has been <laughs> a little bit of a hefty one. <laughs> Well, that's right. I mean, there's inflationary problems all around the world at the moment. They're not unique to Spain. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think inflation last year was uh, 6.7% compared to the previous year, so quite high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and similar indices, as you said, in, in the UK, in America. Yeah. I, I, I didn't follow that, those ones, uh, those indices in Australia, I have to be honest, but uh, the, the, well, the conversations that I have with my friends, they, they mentioned the same thing, that mm. typical grocery shopping is, is going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it, yeah. One, one thing that I've noticed here that's gone up is toilet paper. I don't know if you've noticed it, uh, Ivan, but it's not because it's running off the shelves, but uh, the, it's gone up uh, 50, 50 cents since December. It's in, well, at my, lo at my local supermarket anyway. It's an okay. incredible uh, price hike. I, I need to have a look at it. To be honest, I haven't, I haven't bought toilet roll this January, but I'm sure I it will be coming fairly soon. But yeah, I will, I will pay attention. I, I can tell you that you know the, the normal uh, veggies and, and fresh things. You know, my my local I don't know grocery pattern involves a lot of fresh things during the week, and yeah, that definitely has yeah, yeah, yeah. has increased. <laughs> I think a lot of people here are turning to the to the discount shopping you're right uh right so they're they're starting to to wait for the specials to come out and then buy up in bulk which is obviously a way to to save a bit of money because if you're buying on a day-to-day -day basis that's probably when you're noticing the price hikes and uh, a lot of people traditionally have gone to the local market you know two or three times a week to buy fish to buy meat and uh, maybe they're um you know waiting for the specials to come out now i don't know I had somebody. Uh, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah. If, if you have a space to store and those uh, items are not the non perishable yeah. items, you know, why, why not? Yeah. 
I had uh, I had somebody in the comment section on uh, yesterday's video say that I, he, he's one of your uh, fellow countrymen, but he's living in Australia, and he said that he has cousins living in Madrid, friends living in Madrid, and they don't earn a lot more than a thousand euros a month if they make it. And he said uh, he couldn't understand how they survive on that, considering that in in Melbourne salaries or wages are, are are quite good. And he said, you know, if he compares some of the prices between the two places, Madrid. Uh, can be an expensive city. Barcelona can be an expensive city. And if you're only making a thousand euros a month, Ivan, which uh, a lot of people unfortunately are making at the moment, it is difficult to make yeah, yeah. ends meet, you know. And uh, no, no uh, absolutely. I, I think some of the times when you talk with people, uh, you know, if you, if you see a country as, as a tourist destination, mm. you don't really pay too much attention or well you have a, a villa and you live you know six months or, or 90 days now with these uh, rules you don't really pay much attention or no? you really want to enjoy and everything but i i used to say something very similar when when i came back and uh, you take uh, euro to pound uh, one to one okay so you know you you totally discard the exchange rate uh, difference uh, I I think I believe my my normal shopping it was much cheaper in London, okay, right. and obviously the the salaries were much cheaper in London. The other thing is that here in so, Spain, so, when so we can just one thing, the, the salaries were higher yeah. in London. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, in, in average, the salaries were much higher in London, and I can say that at least I got a twenty percent cut when I moved here. Okay, so <laughs> that's yeah, just too so. Yeah. But one thing that I can say as well that uh, I eat much better here. So, for example, I I wouldn't say that I rarely bought fresh fish in the UK, but I wasn't that happy with the quality. So, my fish intake or our family fish intake it wasn't that good. When in here. Uh, at least once a week, maybe twice a week, we, we have that. And it's like fresh fish, at least for the for the fishmonger, and et cetera, et cetera. So, of course, I just spend more now, <laughs> but because we maybe aim for um, better quality items or because maybe I have missed certain things for a period of time and, and I want to catch up in a, in a certain sense, no? But well, if I balance it out, the cost of things, and I said, discarding the exchange rate, uh, certain my usuals were cheaper in London or my usual I went to Sainsbury's and Morrison sometimes to Tesco's because it was a little bit uh, far away from from where I was yeah. and I, I see a, a difference on the other hand uh, we don't have any council tax here <laughs> okay so you know that kind of like legal expenses uh, totally disappear uh, or the TV license <laughs> we don't have a TV license here in, in the UK uh, sorry in Spain in comparison with, with the UK or, or Ireland so well that's right yeah that's right the controversial television license in, uh, in the UK <laughs> that's it so you said you don't have a, a, a council tax because you, you rent right is that is that the reason yeah I re okay yeah, correct. But if you make it like equivalent to the EV, uh, el, el impuesto de bienes inmuebles, and I think, well, maybe from conversation with my parents or with friends, but what, what do you pay? Maybe around 1000 1500 a, a year, more or less, maybe? Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> That's something yeah, that I know yeah. they're, they're familiar. Uh, in the different boroughs of, of London that I have been living in, it was, well, depending on the property, obviously, but uh, usually I was in between one and two rooms. It was around short 200 pounds a month or high 180 a month, yeah, okay? okay? Yeah. And that's every month. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little bit of a difference, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, that's one of the main differences, yeah. But but in general, things balance out, right? So, so, so all yeah. of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, in, in London, again, the, in the salary, London is not UK and UK is not London, okay? I want to leave it clear <laughs> out there and, and be totally straightforward. And the salaries are much higher in London because the, the, the living costs in London are much higher as well. Yeah, yeah. But if you compare spare income, maybe that would be a, a good uh, KPI to compare both things. Um, it was a, a, around similar, I would say. Well, I think Madrid's similar in that sense. You said, uh, what, what, what was it that you said? The the UK, uh, London is not the UK or something, uh, if you Correct. compare it yeah. in that sense? 
Well, I think Correct. Madrid. I think the Madrid Premier recently said something similar. No, that uh, Madrid is a Spain within Spain or something. I think she said uh, something along those lines. So, I mean, when you talk about capital cities, whether it's London or whether it's uh, the United, uh, sorry, whether it's London or whether it's Madrid, you are talking about a um, a high cost of living because these are places these are magnets where people come to look for opportunities and here in madrid of mm. course the big so, ibex companies are normally here and um you've got i, I don't um, know if Ms. Ayuso or mr almeria was the one who said that or if they wanted to imply some kind of political difference with with, with the with the government well, but for example of course, of course that's UK, what they wanted to do yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't doubt that. But uh, in the UK, I remember when there was some national index, for example, I don't know, the, the increase on real estate, for example, there is a statistic for the UK, except London and then London. When there is, for example, like a government scheme, so the uh, buy to let, uh, for example, the scheme in the UK, I remember there was a threshold for the UK, except London, and another threshold for London. Th those kind of things don't happen. And, and we talk, I remember you mentioned in the news about this, a scheme to help uh, rent out so so the kids effectively can 200 move out euros from a month that's it yeah correct there, there is no difference and you were mentioning quite rightly so in, in madrid and barcelona that really don't let you go out <laughs> too much no, well, no, that's so it, that's it yeah there is a, a it, like, there will like be... a, a penalization if you live in madrid because firstly you can't find exactly. a flat for less than uh close to a, probably a thousand euros nowadays he to find a decent flat in madrid and the other thing mm. is that the the rules stipulate that the property can't be worth more than 600 euros or maximum 900 i think according to the autonomous community so that's right so there's no difference and that's a point that i just want to bring up here now if you this is something that a lot of people complain about especially police officers you know civil guard national police doctors and nurses um, people that work in mm. the public service, their salaries don't increase if they get posted to Madrid a lot of the times, you know. So, that's, that's very true. Hmm. That's very true. And, and in London, there was some kind of like mobility um, add-on if allowance. you are in London because, uh, thank you, allowance, that's, that's the right word. I think there was something for the security, uh, like, you know, police, what, uh, Guardia Civil or, or the army for danger uh, well, i don't know if that is still applicable but i remember for the basque country and things like that like difficult posts yeah. let's say they yeah. have that kind of premium for for those uh, professionals but you know for doctors and things like that i imagine i am i assume they will be much busy a uh, uh, madrid <laughs> hospital than than at the cantabria hospital well at the moment okay, I, so I imagine <laughs> <laughs> I um, imagine, but maybe, well, that's it, maybe that's we it. will get we will get fire on the on the comments as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. But um, another point is there that I mean, it's not only Madrid that where people have this problem. If you go to the Balearic Islands, it's impossible to get a place to rent in mm. Ibiza. It's impossible to get a place in a decent place in in Palma, Palma de Mallorca if you're on a, a civil guard salary. So um, fortunately, that's true, that's they true. have. Fortunately, they have barracks where you know they they can get accommodation in some places where where they don't have to pay um, uh, you know normal rents. But uh, for a lot of people, it's 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 a problem. Indeed, indeed it is. Um, yeah, maybe we we lack third time. I don't know adaptation of those rules or those schemes to to the capital living and, and actually to the reality. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not about the capital or not. It's really to the reality of of that place. And as you say, Balearic. Uh, very difficult to find a, a long-term rental yeah. uh, because everybody wants to keep the properties for the three, four months in summer and make <laughs> the whole year income with people that go tourists and they want, they are that's really exactly willing right. to pay exactly 2000 right. for for 15 days and that's it. And actually, before the uh, before this latest uh, pandemic crisis, that the same things were happening in Madrid with the Airbnbs. The prices of rents were. Oh. Were, were going up true. because everybody was uh, moving into the tourist flat business rather than the long-term rental, so it was difficult to find a place. Just going back to something that you mentioned there about the Basque country, how police did get a um, – or Civil Guard did get like a bonus to go there because it was a very dangerous area. 
And mm. Yeah, we, we are talking well, again. I, I'm not mm, sure. I'm not even related. No, no, to it, that, is, it, it, it is that, true. That it, was, it, it, no, it is true. Oh, okay. And also, what happened? At least in so, the '90s and early 2000s was a thing. I don't well, know right now with yeah, a little I, bit more of a calm situation. That's still the case. But no, I think I think it still does happen today. And uh, and another another privilege that they had if they did time in the Basque Country, because obviously, as we as we said, the risk there was higher than if you were in Cantabria, for example. Um, they also got preferences to be posted to another place in the country as well. So it was like mm. an incentive yeah. to work in the Basque country because, you know, with the risk of bombs going off and, 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 and being a target of a terrorist group, um, the, incentives, the, the incentives were that to, to get a little bit of more money and also to have preferences when it comes to getting posted maybe to your home, to your home region or, or to maybe get an Correct. overseas okay. posting at, a, at an embassy, for example. Yeah, probably they will get some kind of like, I don't know, points scheme. And yeah, depending how many years you have been there, you get more points. And yeah, right. something like that. I think it's very similar to, we were talking the other day about the, the Australian visa with the with the professional visa. You have the list of, you know, the government of Australia, they publish a list of, of Yeah, the professions they want, that's it. Correct. And they said, well, mm, <laughs> we have enough in New South Wales, we have enough in, in Victoria, you need to go to Northern Territory or you need to go to, you know, the places that are not the main cities, let's say, that Wagga, Wagga. We, we have covered. <laughs> exactly. We have covered our quota of, of doctors uh, yeah. and, and nurses, etc., etc. So they force you. Know, you are willing to go to Australia, of course. That's something that you need to to um, take into account. But yes, you probably you have to be in those places for for a few <laughs> amount of years until until you yeah, get some yeah, 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 yeah. of the well, attractive. They also, yeah. they also made backpackers part of the backpacker visa. Was that you had to go to a country area and pick fruit or work mm. in the countryside as well. Yeah, like, like a farmer thing. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's it. So they put these conditions in place where, you know, to, 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 to get a, uh, you know, to have the privilege, let's say, of, uh, of uh, working in Australia or, or living in Australia, you know, you, that's incredible. But anyway, not only yeah. do you have to pay $7,000, Ivan, but you also get sent to a place that maybe you don't want to go. That's it. But anyway, that's the, what can we say? Talk, well, it's talking Australia about Australia. Day today, so we, yeah, we, we, have, have your Australia Day, mate. <laughs> well, I haven't celebrated, to be honest. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a anti uh, Australia Day person. A lot of people nowadays call it Invasion Day, and there's all of these, there's all of these protests and th and things like that. When I, when I was growing up, it wasn't a big celebration, you know. I think maybe I, I don't even think it was a public holiday. I might be wrong, but. Uh, you know, we we didn't celebrate the the twenty sixth of January with fireworks when I was a kid. That was something that came in maybe when I was in my twenties or or maybe a, a little bit earlier. But now it's become a a real show of um, of um, patriotism, and um, everybody gets out and has a barbecue, and there's ads on TV, and people wear Australia uh, flag thongs, uh, flip-flops for people that are not familiar with thongs and they, they have a special uh, <laughs> esky and everybody puts zinc cream on their face and tries to get into that spirit. But like I said, when I was growing up, it wasn't really the thing, you know? So I'm not really mm -hmm. into the Australia Day celebrations as some people are. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but I guess... <laughs> That is one of the things that maybe when you are like abroad, you feel a little bit more mm, dear to you. For example, when, you know, it's not nothing really similar to that, but I never been, I don't know, like eating ham or, or having a leg of ham. It's not, it wasn't a thing in, in my home and, and in my family home. And when I start going abroad and living abroad, the only thing that I wanted to come back home is like just to eat ham. You know, like yeah, you, well, you never know what you're missing you until yeah. you don't have it. Correct. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I mean, e e even here, I, I mean, I see people on, on Facebook groups. There's an Aussies in Madrid Facebook group, and people are saying, "Let's get together at the 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 only Australian <laughs> restaurant in Madrid and and have a you know a, a palma or a palmy or whatever they call them, and a and a, a palmy in a pot. I think is the the expression, and that's something that I don't feel like doing you know but a lot of people you know want to get together with other aussies on australia day and celebrate so i can understand that you know it's a it's a day as you said where people reminisce about the the country that they left and all of the good things you don't really remember the bad things but uh <laughs> you, of course you, remiss, <laughs> uh, you, you you think about all the all the good things like um you know maybe having a pie with a 
with a bit of tomato sauce or, you know, a, 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 a can of Australian beer, if you can find one here in Madrid. And, uh, you know, that's what... I mean, it's it's Foster's an, an Australian beer, Stuart. Uh, Foster's originally is an Australian beer, but uh, nobody in Australia drinks Foster's. It's an export beer, I think, which was made popular <laughs> in the UK. And, uh, I was I was totally disappointed when, you know, probably is it one of those things that they have Australia. Been, well, that they find that you cannot even see it or nobody knows about it. And, you know, only the, the Australians that have been in the UK that have quite, are quite a lot. They say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's is kind of like a, like a <laughs> European thing that <laughs> trick yeah. you into what is the, the Aussie beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Austra Australia has always been when it comes to beer. I mean, we're moving off the topic of Spain, so we won't uh, talk about it too much. But Australia, when it comes to beer, has always been – According to the state that you were living in, especially when I was growing up, there was a certain beer that people drank, right? So in Western Australia, people drank Swan Lager or Emu Export were the two uh, beers that were readily available. Now there's hundreds of beers to choose from. Uh, and if you lived in Queensland, you drank Forex. If you lived in Sydney, you drank Tui's. And if you lived in uh, Victoria, you, you drank um, uh, Carlton United Breweries, which is where Foster's originated from. But I think they, like okay. I said, they sold the brand, I think, to, 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 or it became international for some reason. But if you go to a pub, but if you go to a pub now, and in South Australia, I think it's West End or something like that, or Cooper's or something, I'm not sure. But, but if you go to um, uh, WA, you'll still find, you know, Swan Lager on tap. If you go to Queensland, you'll, you'll find 4X on tap if you go to a pub. And, and the, the, those are, were the traditional beers, S similar to here in Spain, that you've got your mouths. You got mm, your Malbec in Madrid, your Cruz Campo down there in Andalusia, your Ambar in uh, Aragon in uh, Catalonia. You're probably drinking Estrella Dam, and in Galicia, you're probably drinking Estrella Galicia. Not sure in Cantabria, do you have a, a, a unique beer or not? not now, no. with the increase of these microbreweries, yeah, there's quite a few, but nothing well, like that, those no. traditional ones that you have made. No, no, you, you know your beer, sister. That's no, that's very <laughs> <Of> good. <course. laughs> I've drunk. I've dr uh, I've drunk enough over the years to 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 to, to <laughs> sort of be um, able to uh, have an opinion on the topic. But uh, that's good. That's good. When, when I was in Australia, I was I was fond on a Victoria Bitter. <laughs> well, that's a, Vict a Victoria. That's a Carlton United from the same family as Foster's. That's right. Yeah, they've got uh -huh. uh, nice. Quite a few beers come out of Victoria. Uh, Victoria Bitter is one. Another one called Carlton. Uh, Carlton Draft, I think, is quite a nice drop as well. So there's plenty of beers. But again. You said those microbreweries in Australia, they're popping up or they have popped up in over the last decade or so uh, and uh, people are spoilt, spoilt for choice when it comes to beer. That's, that's true, that's true. The, the, the scene has, has grown, I think, globally. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And now with the internationalisation, I mean, even here, Ivan, if you want to drink a, well, maybe not English beer anymore. I haven't seen the English beer at the local supermarket. Oof. I've seen, I see um, mm. Guinness still. I see a lot of German beers on the supermarket shelves there now. But the, the, Guinness, the Guinness here definitely doesn't taste like like the one in Dublin. And well, I have to say that the Guinness in the UK doesn't taste like the Irish one. It might be the water, it might be something else. I don't really know, but it doesn't taste like that. Probably, <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. It's, it's not my favorite. Topic. You know, I'm not a, a stout, a stout uh, guy, a stout uh, kind of beer, but you know. One odd one when I come here for the old memories. Um, like that. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it definitely, definitely doesn't taste the same. In here, I think it tastes more like coffee and it's, it's not right, to be honest. Yeah, I, I really no. miss Smilix from Ireland and, okay. for example, ESB or uh, Dunbar from, from the UK. Those were my, my favorites. Uh, if I see them around here, I definitely will get a, a cage of two, but they're not, not very popular. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, I'm not a big fan of Guinness to be honest. Uh, like I said, maybe St Patrick's Day if I'm out with an Irish friend, I'll have a Guinness or two. But uh, it's not something that I would order normally, or I wouldn't buy a can because I'm just not used to the taste. You know, mm, I, I can relate to that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I think that's it. All right, good. Now uh, I think that's more or less today, uh, Ivan. I don't think there's anything else that we wanted to bring up. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention? I didn't bring much to the table today, so just a bit of a, of a chit chat, the typical chat on the bar trying to solve the world, Stuart. Well, that's what we're here for, uh, Ivan. We're trying to solve all of the problems uh, 
uh, that uh, that Spain throws up uh, on a daily basis. Uh, just That's before it. we finish, there was something that was in the press today that um, the uh, the perception the perception of corruption. I mentioned that a little bit. Now, as a Spaniard, do you perceive that that Spain is any worse than any other country that you've lived in as far as corruption is concerned, or not? Mm. <laughs> My perception is yes. My perception is that it's worse than but the countries that I have been. If I would have lived in, I don't know, South American countries or African countries, again, <laughs> generalizations are always wrong, and I don't yeah. want to be <laughs> the target so, of all of your <laughs> no, that's okay. so again, de so demanding again, we, public. But yeah. So again, when we're talking about perception, so where is it you that that, that you that what, what at a uh, council level or just the day to day because. Okay, perception. So, for example, um, I, I remember a case, it was like ages ago, in probably, I would say, easily eight years, maybe nine years ago, because I remember it was like, um, more or less, arrived to the UK or not been there for, for long. And I remember there was this case of, it was an MP that passed some expenses of petrol or some meals uh, for trips that didn't happen. Oh, basically, they were trying to get money out in of the, their the uh, allow allowances in the UK. Okay, yeah, I think, and it I, was when I think the it press. Was a, I, I think it was a, it was an, it was called the allowance scandal or something. I think wasn't it? I, I don't really remember. I remember very clearly that if that would have happened in Spain, it would not even hit the highlights <laughs> because that you know as soon as it get on the on the tablets and on the highlights, probably I don't know the, the week after or something like that. That person, you know, hand their, their resignation letter, uh, and that's it. It was a scandal, and I, I don't know, it was like a small figure. We are talking about hundreds or um, uh, maybe little thousands, but, you know, it was not like a huge money. I'm, I'm sure that happened in Spain. First of all, you will never know because uh, another one. You know, it's it like in, in the lines of, or, or to even worse, the, the, the situation, something that they, maybe the people has get used to live with that they don't even lift an eyebrow anymore yeah, because yeah, of that, yeah. which which is a little bit more concerning. So yeah, because of that, my perception is that maybe we are we are worse in, in that situation. You know, again, and, and Spanish, I'm very proud of my country, but there are certain things that can be improved. And if we want to be a um, Champions League, <laughs> and I'm sure somebody will remember this kind of expression, well, if we want well, to be in yeah, the Champions League of the country. You can remember those expressions, that's it. <laughs> Spain we, we have playing in the Champions this. League. That's it. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I think that but, was. You I know, if we was, want to be there, I think, was, I think it was Zapatero that said that back in the day. I think it was Zapatero. Yeah, <laughs> it was with some. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. we're not getting political, Stuart. I, no, I no, 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 I don't, I, I don't want to get. get. But the, 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 this is just something that caught my attention today. Obviously, I'm not. Sp <laughs> I'm, I'm not Spanish, so obviously I don't get asked these questions. But there's the, the perception of corruption, and the reason I'm. I've I brought this up is because there was a, a, another high profile story this week about um, uh, a royal family member who separated from her husband. Did you hear about that? I, I hear about that. I saw some pictures. I received some mm, memes or memes or whatever <laughs> you pronounce it in, in my yeah. <laughs> WhatsApp groups. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this guy. This guy ten years ago was sitting in a courtroom because he was accused of a huge corruption scandal back in the day, right? It was called the Caso Nos. El Caso Nos. That's right. Perfect. He was together with a with a with a business partner. They came up with a plan to get public money using his influence as a member of the royal family. And we're talking I I, I mean I'm not sure the exact amount of money, but you know, in the millions here, right? And um now the focus is on is on him and I've been reading the headlines here, and 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 you know it's uh, uh, the Infanta Cristina splits from her husband, blah blah blah. But you don't hear much about what he did. You know, he did his jail time. Of course, he went to jail for a few years. Was he w was on bail for good behaviour, and all of those things. And now he's in the press because of a divorce. But not many people are bringing up the fact that he is a convicted criminal, right? Well, of course not. The <laughs> I guess. I, I, the, the monarchy in this, I have the feeling that the monarchy in, in my country has some sort of like, it's, whenever they want to put the attention, 
well, for sure protection and maybe not that much. But the problem is that if we want to be truly honest, 100% honest with ourselves, uh, something like that has been happening with the um, the former king, the, the well, Rey Juan Carlos, with yeah, influences yeah. For, for years and years. Yeah. And nobody dared to say anything or to write a single word because there was some sort of, yeah. I don't know, protection around that, the figure or things like that. Yeah. But there, there was a matter of a fact that he was doing certain things that yeah, but he's never he shouldn't been, be doing. He, he's never been found guilty in a court of law like this person well, was right uh, so so i mean that, that, that that's the main we, difference that i'm, I'm trying to bring from, out here is correct correct the, from, from that point that i was mentioning and then to to maybe that leave the, that blanket of protection from from the royal family yeah. as a whole and then we see these uh, people uh, and, and different cases going through and as you yeah. said uh, Iñaki Urdaguarín was was convicted and you know that happened and uh, he was uh, making pay his time in prison as you said and there was the, that distance between uh, Christina and Iñaki, or, or the king at the time, wanted to separate and draw the line very, very thoroughly. Yeah. That, you know, they are not now member of the of the royalty, or they are not welcome in this kind of uh, I don't know massive mm, um, gatherings or <laughs> inaugurations or things like that. So they were separated from the public life in in that sense. No, but yeah, yeah. yeah here we are again, and and the memory is is short lived and now what is sells newspaper is this guy or there were some pictures with this guy walking holding hands with uh, somebody that it wasn't his wife <laughs> pretty much and, and because of that the, the press chase even his um, elder son, son I, yeah. I don't know how old must he must have I been think but, he's in his early 20s you know, yet yeah. imagine the situation you know taking on con well, let's, let's don't take on con the public profile at the end of the day your your dad allegedly has cheated. You are some sort of public figure, and uh -huh. you are in your early twenties, and you have been chased by the press <laughs> to make this like, you know, probably that's yeah, that's yeah, appalling. Yeah. That's appalling behavior, and especially I, I don't know. It, probably it will be like hurtful moments for for that family in, in a of sense. Course, so. yeah, well, of course, a uh, separation or a divorce is nothing. It's never pretty, but again. Mm. And this is a conversation for another day, but when you are a public figure, and uh, obviously everybody in the royal family is a public figure, and uh, this particular family and the do the kids of the other uh, sister, Elena, I think her name is, mm. are also public figures. They're, they're out and about going to, to nightclubs, and they're always in the, the paparazzi press, and you know that they do get their photos. I, th I think they feel much more comfortable being in the spotlight. Uh, it's like well, Froilan, Froilan Fro and Froilan Victoria, and Federica. Victoria Federica. That's right. <laughs> but but my point here is that when, when you are a public figure and you are somebody like this gentleman who was caught walking down, you know, walking along the beach, holding hands with another woman somebody's always going to know who you are even though it was in france i think somebody's always going to yeah. know who you are somebody's always going to take a photograph so he obviously knew what he was doing because he is a public figure and when you belong to that yes. royal family as is the case of the british royal family you are public figures and you are open to public scrutiny and public questioning so but as i said that's a conversation for another day now we'll start to wrap it up uh ivan i'm using a new program here so we'll just celebrate the end <laughs> All right, there we go. So we've come to the end of another uh, video today. Good speaking to you, and uh, we'll be in contact for next week, hopefully. And uh, hopefully the feedback won't be too negative in the comment section. It's okay. We will go with anything. <laughs> Stay safe, Stuart, and ta-da. <laughs> All right, Ivan. Good day. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.